Welcome to part four of lecture 16 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off trying to come to an answer for a turbine, you know, why might you want to have a small number of blades, why might you want to have a large number, and let's look at that here. So if we have a, a low blade count, uh, the blades uh, are expensive and heavy, so having few of them is better and more blades means more cooling air needed so there's a, a increased reduction in the the cycle efficiency and more blades means more surface area so there's more viscous drag so we probably could get a higher efficiency with fewer blades um, as well uh, it might make the engine lighter and cheaper um, but if we have a large number of blades uh, we, we it's sort of easy uh, to produce the required flow turning without separating the suction side boundary layers um, and also without causing any separation on the hub and casing boundary layers in a three-dimensional flow path. So the pros and cons sort of uh, the, and, and so some kind of balance is, is generally needed. And the Zweifel loading coefficient generally guides this and tells us how many blades to choose. So the definition of this is it's the ratio of the tangential force per unit span on one blade um, divided by an idealized maximum possible tangential force. So this idealized maximum force is the axial cord, the x, times the difference between the inlet stagnation pressure and the outlet static pressure. And we can write this in terms of the mass flow going through one blade passage. Um, with the blade height and, and turning of the flow, we can introduce the blade height h and, and the delta v theta as the turning and write it this way. And we can make our life even easier just by considering quantities at mid span. Um, we could then estimate the mass flow rate to be just the density times the height times the blade pitch, which is the tangential distance between the blades and the axial velocity. Um, we'll assume that the axial velocity is not changing. Uh, and then we would simplify the pressure difference term using an incompressible approximation that P naught uh, in minus P out would just be one half rho Vx squared over cos squared alpha out. Now, of course, the flows are usually highly compressible in turbines, but um, because this is a definition that's being used for an empirical coefficient, it doesn't really matter as long as this definition is used consistently. So if we put all that together, we get an expression for this Weifel coefficient. And even though you know the expression is you know Zweifel coefficient equals, we, we generally know the Zweifel coefficient, or we know what we want it to be. We generally want it to be as high as possible without being too high. Um, so we want it to be uh, around 0 0.8. Some cases times we'll let it be a little higher, like in a low pressure turbine, up to around one is okay. Um, and then what the thing that we won't know is the pitch s. And if we know the mean radius of our machine, once we have S, we can determine the number of blades needed. Note that the inlet and outlet angles here are uh, alpha out and alpha in are of opposite signs. So these tangent terms are not actually, you're not really taking a difference, you're actually adding them. In table 9.1 of the textbook, there are some general guidelines for sort of acceptable values of various design parameters for axial turbines to kind of summarize what we've gone through here. Now let's move our attention to uh, axial compressors. So we start thinking about uh, velocity triangle construction. Conceptual conceptually, this is done in exactly the same way as it is for turbines. Normally, the absolute and the relative tangential velocities are of opposite signs in compressors. So the absolute uh, tangential velocities will be positive, and the relative tangential velocities will be negative. Let's do that here. Both in. And in every blade row, the flow is decelerated and turned towards the axial direction in that blade row's reference frame. We see that here. In the rotor, the relative velocity becomes less tangential. And in the stator, the absolute velocity becomes less tangential. As was already mentioned, compressors require many stages to avoid flow separation. Right, the velocity is decreasing, so we always have a risk of flow separation. The typical upper limit is that you can't really reduce uh, the velocity by more than 50% of the inlet value in one blade row. 
we can do some preliminary design assessment with uh, the use of some in another empirical factor called the diffusion factor. Um, and for a stator, um, and you could do the same thing for a rotor, except all the velocities would become relative velocities. Uh, the diffusion factor is one minus uh, v two over v one um, plus delta v theta over uh, two sigma v one, where sigma is the, something called the solidity c over s. Note that this is the blade chord, not the axial chord. So there's two factors in that diffusion factor. Uh, there's two two terms. Um, what do you think each term is related to? So here's the equation again. Um, think about how each term would change or stay the same if we were dealing with a simple diffuser and a duct instead of a compressor blade row. So think about this for a couple minutes and try to come up with your own answer before you move on to the next part of the video. And we'll also take this up during the tutorial.